It's been a while, but we finally have another project. We're going to attempt to take this semi-modern Mac Mini and some accessories and fit it inside of this Mac Classic 2. All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's been quite some time since our last update. Uh, in fact, I think it's been close to two years. Um, it's not that I haven't done anything in that amount of time. It's just, as the saying goes, life gets in the way. Uh, but no worries for those of you that have stuck around, my subscribers, throughout this entire process. I want to thank you, um, or I guess really more like throughout this lull, uh, because you're still here. And obviously you're getting a chance to see a new video. And those of you that are popping in for the first time, hopefully you go ahead, you hit that like and subscribe and uh, enjoy, hopefully, some more consistent content. All right, so let's get down to business here because obviously I've got everything sitting in front of you. And the whole purpose of, of this video is to kind of give you a rundown uh, of what to expect um, from this project. And so first and foremost, I guess I'm going to talk about probably the coolest piece of tech, and that's this Mac Classic 2. Now, it is branded a Performa 200. Uh, it has something to do with Apple attempting to distance themselves uh, from the lineage of the Apple II and specifically the Macintosh. So the Performa brand came in um, and they still had a bunch of these lying around, I guess. And they said, hey, just slap the new name on it and just get rid of them. So this is still a compact Mac. Uh, it actually uses a 16 megahertz 68030. Uh, which all the, the Mac Classics, I believe, used, uh, the Mac Classic and the Mac Classic 2. Uh, I know prior to that, the Mac SE 30 also used the 60830. I don't remember if it was the same speed, but the, the Compact Mac before that, which I also have one of them, I picked one up over COVID, uh, was the Mac Plus, and that used actually an 8 megahertz 68000. So it was not much different from the original Mac 512K. Uh, but so this thing here, a uh, little 9-inch monochrome display, uh, it came with either a 40 megabyte or an 80 megabyte hard drive. I think this one I purchased off eBay has a 40 megabyte hard drive. I'm sure it's some quantum SCSI drive that doesn't even work. Uh, I actually don't even know what the functionality of this is at this point. Uh, we're going to find that out in a later video. Um, but it, what's nice is that it does give me some, or at least what I assume to be some upgradable parts for my Mac, uh, my Mac Plus. Uh, the Mac Plus has an 800K uh, floppy disk, which was really cool uh, back in 1985, 1986, or maybe 87, I can't remember, uh, when it was released. Uh, but trying to find anything that can write to it today is a giant pain, let alone finding an 800K floppy. So I actually have a handful of 1.44 megabyte floppies at home and a USB uh, super drive that I can actually write Mac images to. So I can do some things with this floppy disk in here, hopefully in my Mac Plus. It also came with two megs of RAM. I don't know if it's been updated. I'll find out when I go, but the RAM should be pin compatible with what's in my Mac Plus, which only came with a megabyte, although it can max out to a whopping four megabytes. Um, this thing is in relatively pristine condition. Uh, I've cleaned it up a little bit. Um, I don't have any video of that, but it had some scuffs. Uh, the easiest way to get rid of that stuff is some WD-40 and a magic eraser. So cleaned up really well. Uh, if I pick it up and shake it, you can hear something rattling on the inside. Again, I don't know what that is. I don't know what functionality is. We're going to find out together in a later, in a later video. Um, but it it's mint. Okay, or mint E. Now all I got was this, uh, $75 shipped on eBay, uh, 75 plus shipping on eBay. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, but for what it's worth, it's a fantastic case. And if anything salvageable, like the nine inch monochrome display, if I can give that to somebody in the community uh, and let that live a life somewhere else, I'm all for it. Now, if you're wondering how this project actually came to be, uh, it's, it's not the Mac Classic. Um, considering I just told you I had to go and find this on eBay. Uh, it's actually this little guy. Um, this is a Keytron K8. Uh, I don't know why this little beautiful beige wonder decided it needed to go ahead and say, hey, I exist. Um, but it did. It popped up on Amazon at some point, And I just got to thinking, man, does that really match some old school beige computers? And then I remembered, huh, I 
have that Mac Mini. And I've actually got three Mac Minis, four if you include one that my friend Steve has to go ahead and give me. Um, and the wheels just got spinning. Uh, I wasn't going to go ahead and pull apart my, my Mac Plus. Uh, that thing is mint, original, and fully functional. Uh, in fact, you'll get a chance to see it when this project's all done so we can compare the two just for, uh, just for posterity purposes. Um, but I just couldn't get it out of my brain. I sat on that in, my, in a wish list for probably two weeks, uh, started searching on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, and finally found this for a good price. Because I'll be honest, a lot of these compact Macs are super expensive, especially the SE30. Um, and just the price was right. I pulled the trigger uh, and then things just kind of got going from there. All right, look, so I'm really looking forward to, to kind of walking you through at least uh, my thought process behind uh, this whole project. Uh, I'm not going to get through any specific teardown or troubleshooting or problem solving here. I, I guess that makes this video a glorified teaser trailer. And as much as I want to apologize for that, uh, I finally got a video uploaded to YouTube. So, I mean, in this case, some content's better than no content. Uh, but my goal is to kind of walk you through everything sitting here. Uh, my plan, as far as how I'm going to pull this off, uh, some of my thought process behind certain things I'm going to do, um, and then try to give you at least a breakdown of what the video should look like so at least you know uh, what you'll be looking forward to here in the future. Um, but I've talked about the, uh, the Mac Classic, I guess the Performa 200. Uh, the goal for, for this is complete disassembly, but absolutely no modification to the case. And I'm going to repeat that for all the OG Classic Mac fanatics that found their way here that are freaking out about to leave me death threats in the comment section. I am not going to butcher this case. Not even close. Uh, I have access to everything from 3D printers to the CNC router you can see behind me. And there's absolutely no reason why any modifications need to be done to this case in order for this to actually work. At least that's my game plan. Now, what I'm going to do is pull at least the guts out. The metal frame that exists inside is going to ultimately be the home where I design and, and bolt up some kind of bracket in order to go ahead and eventually put this Mac Mini, and I say this Mac Mini when this is obviously a logic board and the Mac Mini is sitting right there. Um, but so the goal is to bolt this thing in, create some heat ducting to go, go ahead and kick hot air out of the side of the case, pull hot air or cold air from the case inside, uh, and then go ahead and go from there. Now, again, this is the logic board. Uh, this is actually a uh, Mac Mini 6.2 logic board. It's actually uh, a Mac Mini server. Uh, so this is an i7-3720QM. Uh, QM. It's quad core, so it's got four cores. It's got eight threads. Uh, this came with 16 gigs of RAM. I've been told that this is uh, actual, actually functional. Um, I need to make sure that it, that happens sooner than later, so if I have to return it, I can. Now, if you're sitting here wondering, why on earth did I buy an upgraded logic board when I had a perfectly functioning Mac Mini? Do I like to waste money? <laughs> uh, the answer is maybe sometimes. Um, but the situation is, is that this Mac Mini 5.2 is one of the units that comes with dedicated graphics. Um, anything from the 2011 to the 2014 era of Mac Minis, uh, MacBook Pros, anything that was a mobile-based setup that had dedicated graphics, Apple had a ton of issues with. This thing specifically has an AMD Radeon HD 6630M. And the heat pipe setup on the 5.2 is actually no different than the 6.2, despite the fact that this not having a dedicated graphics processor. So heat became a huge factor. So I initially did the whole Xbox 360, wrapped the thing in the blanket and just let it overheat. 
Um, and let me tell you, it got so hot that one of the USB accessories I had plugged into it actually got a little uh, tacky, a little rubber around, the rubber insulation around the cable. Um, and it worked at least to install Mac OS. And then it went right back to giving me issues at the EFI boot. And in this case, it was just DOA. And that's what I get. I bought this Mac Mini for super cheap on eBay a couple years ago. In order to go ahead and upgrade my network, I wanted to have a PFSense box that was small and lightweight and it was on sale. I thought it would make sense and it clearly didn't. So I had to pull the trigger either on a full Mac Mini or in this case, I found this logic board for a really good price and it came with RAM. Now again, it came with, it came with a good price. So I'm gonna hope that it works. We'll find out here in a future episode. Uh, but the goal is to go ahead and install this um, inside of here, again, with no modifications. I do have a 256 gigabyte solid state drive that I'm going to use, and I'm gonna use the 16 gigs of RAM. And so this thing will be a pretty capable Mac. Um, almost modern, not fully modern. Obviously there were Mac Minis that came out in 2014, 2018, and now we have the M1 Max, um, which I was really interested uh, and being able to go ahead and potentially upgrade this in the future, which is why ultimately this, this Mac mini shell is not going to end up in here because it's going to be a lot easier for me to refit what I need to um, if I decide to change logic boards or upgrade in the future. Now, from here, um, you probably saw this Apple uh, desktop bus mouse. So this is a first gen ADB mouse. Um, this did not come with this. I had to find this on eBay. Um, finally found one that wasn't an absorbent amount of price. Uh, an absorbent price. I don't know what you people are thinking. These are not worth fifty dollars plus shipping, and that's cheap. I paid fourteen dollars for this, and it was guaranteed to work. Does it work? I have no idea. I don't care. But how am I going to use this with a modern Mac? And that's where this first gen Apple Mighty Mouse comes into play. Now, if you've ever used one of these, uh, they, they are one of the first Apple mice that use right and left click. Uh, their scroll wheel was this little ball, uh, very reminiscent of, of the original track balls you found on some of those uh, laptops that Apple produced in the early 90s before they went ahead and moved to the trackpad. Um, and then they have like the squeeze ability. Um, Squeezeability is out, just going to be honest. But I have visions of grandeur where I will be able to retrofit the internals of this thing inside this thing, including the scroll wheel and right and left click support, even though I only have one button. I'm going to talk more about that in a future video, uh, but that's going to be my game plan for this. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it'll probably be the hardest part of this whole process. Um, but you know me at this point, I'm up for a challenge. So I'm really excited. Uh, last thing here to talk about is the screen. Okay, the screen is obviously a huge thing. This is a nine inch monochrome screen. It's not even grayscale. Okay, it's monochrome. Now, yeah, you can change it to grayscale on the SE30, which means anything, any other compact Mac, it could be grayscale, blah, blah, blah. You're right. I, I'm just not going to use that. I'm hoping it works and it's good and I can either repurpose it for something or hopefully give it to somebody else who needs one in one of their compact Macs. Um, but for the time being, for me, it's going to get stored with all the other CRTs that are currently in my classroom. Um, but that said, what's really cool is that some people have done some really neat things to make modern displays work in this. And so uh, this right here, this is something I 3D printed, uh, but this came, this is called, if you Google, is it called the CRT to LCD or LCT to CR, uh, CRT, I can't remember. Again, link in the description. And so this bolts up, okay, right where the CRT bolted up. Now that's pretty cool because it's flat in the back and obviously you can make some kind of mount in order to go ahead and get an LCD in there. Now it is four by three and most LCDs are obviously 16 by nine or 16 by 10, they're widescreen. Um, so that takes a little bit of problem solving. Um, but what's really cool about this is that somebody realized that you could take a piece of acrylic 
and you can sandwich it between this mount, this mounting bracket and the case, and it will look CRT-esque. So it's not just open flat, it's actually got a curve like a CRT. So I'm really excited to see how this looks. Um, if it's wonky and not worth it, I'll probably move on from it. But some of the pictures I've seen, as long as you turn the sharpness up on the, on the LCD panel you're using, and it's not a horrible quality screen, it actually looks pretty good. Um, so I'm excited to see just what that looks like. Uh, but so the, that's the easy part. The hard part is finding a display. Now, I know some people like to use uh, iPad displays, specifically the Retina displays that come in the third and fourth, the third and fourth gen iPad, because they've got a weirdly high resolution, even though they're a four by three, 9.7 inch screen. The problem with that, it's 9.7 inches, and this is 9.1. It's a little too big. So initially I'm like, you know, okay, so if I just mount the screen farther back, you know, you'll be able to fit the whole thing in. But after doing some tests and, and actually running the screen, and in this case, the HDMI driver board through an actual Mac, one of my MacBook Pros, it's, they're left a lot to be desired. Um, so I started trying to find some other ideas and I actually ended up watching a video from Two Guys Tech uh, awesome channel, by the way, lots of cool stuff. But so they took a Mac Classic 2, it actually says Mac Classic 2 in the front, um, and they took that and they went ahead and they did practically what I did, just a really quick and dirty version. Uh, not nearly as elegant, they used a ton of epoxy, but they used a 10 inch widescreen display they found from Amazon. So I went looking and I found this from E yo yo e yo yo I don't know. This is a 19 by 20 by 1200 1610 widescreen display. It's good enough to do 1080p at 60 hertz. Well, I don't need 1080p, but I would like a decent enough resolution to actually function with a modern Mac OS because my ultimate goal, okay, is to install Catalina, which is the highest that this uh, logic board can, can actually support. And if I get bored, I know I can hack my way through to go ahead and get Monterey installed. Either way, they're expecting at least a, 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 like a 1080p or equivalent display. So I thought after watching uh, Two Guys Tech, they ran 1024 by 768 um, on their screen and got four by three look and black bars on the side, no stretch. So I picked this up on Amazon, the link's down in the description, and I was like, can I get 1600 by 1200 out of this and it'd be 4.3? And lo and behold, I did. Now I can't say 1600 by 1200 resolution with a 10 inch display is the easiest on the eyes. So may I may have to maybe kick it down a notch. It's like 1300 and change by I think it's 1,000, like 50. I don't know, it's super close to 1080p. Um, but regardless, this, after disassembly, with some 3D printed attachments to this, I will be able to fit this inside and the four by three fits perfectly in here. Again, when I figured it out, it was so awesome. I was so pumped. Now I think that covers everything. Um, the, the goal here uh, is to go ahead and get a series of videos to kind of walk you through this whole process because it's going to need, we're going to need to chunk and move as we move along. Um, videos that I'm going to incorporate, first and foremost, I want to go ahead and actually plug this thing in because believe it or not, I have not plugged it in yet. So I have no idea what to expect from it. Um, I am going to pull it apart. Again, there's something inside rattling around. I want to see what it is and at least I can take a look at the logic board and the analog board if the caps are way beyond uh, their serviceable life. Maybe I won't plug it in, but if everything looks good, we're going to plug it in and see what happens. Um, it may be that this thing works and just needs a quick clean. It may be that it just needs some ROMs and it's RAM reseated. It may be that it was just DOA and I'm going to salvage what I can and move on. Um, so that's going to be one video. Another video, what we're going to do is we're going to have to get this Mac Mini apart, get the new logic board set up and get Mac OS installed and just run it through its paces to make sure everything's good. If it's not, I have to return it and I have to kind of go back to the drawing board. What my goal is, as far as what is going inside of this, that's gonna be the brains of the operation. Um, from there, 
we're gonna go ahead and get this thing completely apart and we're gonna start the brainstorming process of how we're going to fit all of this inside of here. Now again, I do not want to cut this thing apart. There will be no modifications if I can help it, all right? But I have to go through that process. So luckily, I'm gonna do that with you and you're gonna get a chance to actually see what that looks like with me. Cause I've done some of it, but never any of it, like sit down, make drawings, everything else. So I'm really looking forward to doing that with you. And then we're also going to have to do that with the mouse refit. So we're going to go through the process of pulling the Apple desktop must, uh, bus mouse apart, pulling the money mouse apart. And I have no idea how that comes apart because it's got no fasteners that I can find on the outside, or at least that's got some screws. Um, but we're going to hope that I can pull that off without ruining both mice. Um, last but not least, we have to get this whole thing assembled. And so that means we're going to have our 3D printed parts, anything we have to see and see, whatever and ultimately go through and getting this thing assembled, ready to go, and actually turn it into a real computer. So what is that? Like one, two, three, four, like five different videos? Five videos, I have five videos planned for you guys. I'm like, hey, I have the next video figured out, which is typically a lie, but now I actually legitimately have five videos, okay, to go ahead and actually go through. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, for you to, to join me with this process. I think it's going to be super cool. There's not a lot of people that are doing it the way I'm doing it. I know it's been done. I know some people do some different things, but I'm really looking forward to going through my way of doing it and sharing that whole process with you. If you're looking forward to future content on this specific series of episodes, please smash that like button. Go ahead and subscribe so you can see those future updates when they show up live. Or if you're bored, take a look at the, the content I already have on my channel. Again, I'm all, all over the place. Technology, video games, and now this. And that just is what it is. Um, but maybe you like what you see. Maybe you want to stick around, watch some of my videos. Um, and we'll go ahead and see where things go from there. Uh, but that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. It's awesome to be back. It's awesome to have a fun project to go ahead and share with you. And I'm really looking forward to the future. All right, but until next time, I'll see you guys later.